there's probably a lot of people in DC right now kind of scratching their, their head, feeling like they got duped or deceived by this person who may um, have not had things exactly in, in order. I hope it doesn't you know, taint their view of the crypto industry broadly. That was Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong on crypto's reputation, which has taken a bit of a hit this week. Joining us now is Perry Ann Boring, founder and CEO of the Chamber for Digital Commerce. Perry Ann, great to speak with you as always. How much damage has been done to the relationship between Washington and this industry because of this episode? Yeah, I mean, I've always seen just the approach that FTX has brought in SBF personally to the conversations in Washington to be a little bit odd. The Chamber of Digital Commerce, we were established in 2014. We were the first organization in the country to advocate for the digital asset and blockchain technology ecosystem. FTX wasn't even established until five years later. So they were here much later to the game and they came out with a very aggressive ways to approach policymakers. So there's a lot of goodwill that's been done by our team at the Chamber, by our members at the Chamber who have relationships that supersede uh, the, the work that SBF has done. I think from a reputational perspective, I, I think it's it, it definitely uh, brings and uh, invigorates the skepticism that we have from mm. regulators and policymakers. But there's an entire industry of people on the ground in Washington educating policymakers about this industry. He is not the face of the industry in Washington, and he never was. And I think that's been misreported. What what uh, what are you hearing from your members right? Right now then, Perry, and I'm sure many of them are probably um, or were FTX clients, are or were, uh, many of them maybe counterparties to Alameda. What are they telling you? Uh, I mean, all of our members who uh, you know had uh, potentially had exposure to FTX, everybody's putting out statements right now, disclosing publicly if any exposure to FTX, the FTT token, or any of the contagion around this. Uh, most of our members, we haven't seen uh, you know, any kind of big news from that out of our membership so far. Uh, this is really more about the customers. Uh, so these are retail investors, and that's where the biggest concern is uh, today. Uh, we are concerned about the regulatory overreach. Anytime there's a crisis or something, uh, when something goes bad, a lot of times policymakers, they tend to overreact. We've seen instances similar to this before. There was Mt. Gox in 2013. We were, we, the chamber was established during the aftermath of Mt. Gox. And what came out of that? We got the New York bit license. So we wouldn't want to see a similar reaction because, you know, there was one bad actor, one bad event. Mm -hmm. We want policy making to be done in an informed way, not based on fear. So that is our priority to ensure that we are fully understanding what's happened here and make sure that any policy responses are done uh, in a way that truly uh, addresses gaps in disclosure regi right. regimes and, and not based out of fear. To that, to that you know, I, I hear it in, in your answer here. Are you saying that lawmakers are at risk of not really trusting a lot of members of the industry anymore after how much money has been lost in this FTX.com issue. Do you think that some of these uh, changes will face a setback for a while? Uh, I mean, has trust been lost? I mean, I, at the end of the day, this is an, off, uh, an, an overseas entity right, where this, this has spurred from. Uh, and we just heard from SEC Commissioner Hester Peirce, who really enforced this point, which is this industry has operated in regulatory uncertainty for a long time. We have been clamoring, the chamber, our members, the industry has been asking for regulatory clarity for, for years. And that has forced so much activity overseas and that's really been to the detriment of american investors uh, and particularly retail investors so mm -hmm. it's really important that we have a regulatory framework that's not enforcement focus this isn't totally you know i don't want to place all the blame on the policymakers because we did have an unusual situation here and even if we had perfect policy right. you can't plan or mitigate against a bad actor in all circumstances uh, but i do believe mm -hmm. if we had taken a more thoughtful approach to policy making in the u.s we could have mitigated the response this week okay so let's talk about policy making then because as all this crypto chaos was going on it's almost easy to forget that we had 
midterm elections here in the U.S. on Tuesday. And of course, we still don't ultimately know what the composition of Congress is going to look like. But how optimistic are you that something bipartisan could get done on crypto legislation in the new Congress? It's very, it's very possible. We will likely uh, have uh, a divided Congress, you know, regardless of uh, which party ends up taking control of which chamber. It, it will be by very slim margins. There is bipartisan support, and actually some policymakers will say this is a nonpartisan issue. There's a difference between bipartisan and nonpartisan. A lot will say crypto is non partisan. This is about technology, right? This is no different than the internet, than electricity, than mobile phones, uh, or PCs. So a lot of policymakers understand from the technology perspective, it's important that mm -hmm. we have regulatory frameworks that encourage the U.S. to be a leader in this space, Marianne. and that's going to be important for competitiveness Marianne. going forward. Bring this, bring this into what actually happened here, because when we saw CZ tweeting over the weekend, he was saying that part of this was because he couldn't really support somebody who was lobbying against him and we've been hearing a little bit of that that FTX you know was not necessarily looking out for the industry but themselves can you quickly explain here you know less than a minute sorry about that but what happened uh, it does appear that uh, there were some crypto politics at play as well I mean you're seeing the same things I'm seeing but uh, it do, the, the crypto exchange market has always been very cutthroat and very competitive. Did that play a hand in the unraveling this week? It's very possible. All right, Perry, and we have to leave it there, but thank you so much for joining us. Perry Ann Boring of the Chamber of Digital Commerce.